Okay, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here today to talk to you about um, NRC's experience with um, increasing alignment with uh, NRC's radiation protection regulations with international recommendations. Um, you know, I, I have to confess, I, I don't have a background in, um, in medical product development and some of the discussions that we had here yesterday I just lack familiarity with, so some of the terminology and the organizations that were talked about yesterday, so, so please bear with me on that. I'm here to provide a perspective in an area outside of medical product development, so I hope that's beneficial for the objective of this meeting. So I have here NRC's mission so you know what, what it is the NRC does um, and to whom our regulations apply. Um, NRC's uh, regulations are for applicants and licenses of um, nuclear materials. So that would include um, you know, nuclear power plants, uh, medical applications, um, users of radioactive materials, um, uh, diagnostic and th therapeutic applications, um, industrial radiography, uh, spent fuel, nuclear, nuclear waste, all sorts of uses. So what I'm going to do today is just start out by providing a very brief overview of NRC's rulemaking process, and then I'm going to get into an example um, that, um, of our alignment of the radiation protection um, regulations with international recommendations. Now, rulemaking is the process of revising the regulations. It's a multi-step process. It takes years. You can think of it as a marathon, not a sprint, okay? And the very first step here is um, to identify the need for rulemaking. And this could really come from any sources. It could be a congressional mandate. It could come from a member of the general public, um, an individual member. It could come from uh, an organization um, like um, professional society, um, an industry group through, through a process called Petition for Rulemaking. It could also be um, staff initiated, and the example that I'll be talking about today was uh, staff initiated. The next step is a regulatory basis, and um, this is a very important step, and it's very important to build a very robust um, regulatory basis. And delays or failures in rulemaking resulting from inadequate regulatory basis could have really significant um, effects and impacts on licensees. Um, a sound regulatory basis will not only reduce the risk for misdirection and delays in rulemaking, but um, it makes the final rule more defensible in court if challenged later on. Public involvement is very likely, um, and there's many ways that we could do this. Oftentimes, we'll make presentations at professional um, uh, organization at the at conferences, annual meetings, um, webinars. Um, oftentimes, we'll solicit public comment through f uh, notices in the Federal Register, uh, regulations.gov website, um, public workshops, public meetings, many opportunities to get that public input. Um, the next step that we have in the rulemaking process is the proposed rule. This step takes about a year, um, and this is where we have some actual rule language developed. We'll publish that in the Federal Register notice um, for about a period of 75 days um, to get that public input. The final rule is the next step, and that also takes about a year, and that also is um, published in the Federal Register. And the package um, looks very similar to the proposed rule. And in the final rule package, um, there is a comment resolution which basically provides responses to all the comments from the, uh, the proposed rule. Okay, with regard to our um, um, current effort underway, there is a, um, the ICRP, which is the International Commission on Radiological Protection, it's an independent international organization that pu publishes reports on all aspects of radiation protection with the intent to prevent cancer, other diseases, and um, other effects associated with exposure to radiation. 
they came out with some um, recommendations um, a few years ago in a report back in 2007. So the first thing that NRC staff did is we um, did an analysis to see if there were any um, areas that warranted potential changes to its radiation protection um, regulations and, and identified some areas and sent um, up its, its recommendations to um, our commission. We have a commission of um, five members, including a chairman, all president appointed, and they vote on matters such as this. A few months later, April 2009, the, um, the commission came back and approved staff's recommendation to move forward with um, um, uh, engaging stakeholders and initiating that development of um, the, the regulatory basis, or actually getting some stakeholder input to develop the, the regulatory basis later on. And we've been doing that since then. Um, we've been doing that for the last three years. We've held um, um, three public workshops. We've given many, many presentations at, at conferences and meetings. Um, had like uh, three solicitations and federal net register notices. And so had many opportunities to um, get some stakeholder discussion and, and stakeholder input. After um, much, much input, um, the staff identified some um, policy areas, uh, policy issues, put that into a set of recommendations, uh, which they sent back up to the commission um, in April of last year. And uh, the commission came back eight months later, just a couple months ago, and um, approved um, staff's uh, a recommendation to move forward with developing a regulatory basis, which would uh, lead into a rulemaking later on, to move forward with changing its radiation protection regulations. Um, of those regulations, or I'm sorry, of those recommendations, the commission approved in part some, uh, staff's recommendations, but disapproved in part some of those recommendations, and I'm going get, to get into that in a little bit more detail. Now, there were many, many recommendations in, in that um, staff paper that went out to the commission. Some of them are, are more domestic related, but uh, what I did here is I pulled out some of those that were more international focused um, with regard to alignment with the ICRP recommendations, and I have them identified here. So the first bullet that I have is um, a recommendation that staff made with regard to dose calculation methodolo methodology and terminology. Staff made a recommendation to align with international recommendation. Um, our methodology for performing dose calculations uh, for dose estimates, radiation uh, dose estimates from, from exposure so it is outdated. Same thing with the terminology. The commission came back and, and voted um, uh, and approved to um, move forward with um, alignment with international recommendations. Um, now this next one here, the occupational dose limits, this has to do with um, um, people who, um, who are occupationally exposed. And NRC has a, a dose limit for these individuals of 5 rem. The ICRP recommended a few years back to, historically, ICRP had recommended 5 rem, but back, but back a few years ago, they recommended reducing that dose limit to um, 10 rem over a five-year period. So essentially, it's an average of two rem per year. This is an area of, of much discussion and much controversy. And in fact, there, this, there was a perception in the international community and some stakeholders that alignment, or lack thereof, um, of NRC's regulations with um, international recommendations could be measured by whether this occupational dose limit um, uh, would be changed. The commission um, voted against reducing that limit, so our um, limit is going to remain at 5 rem. And what that means is that this is an area where we are not going to be in alignment with many other countries around the world. We are going to be staying at that 5 rem limit. Um, there's also a dose limit for the embryo fetus. This is for, um, for uh, women who are, who are occupationally exposed and pregnant. Um, NRC's limit is 500 millirem during the gestation period. ICRP recommends um, reducing that to, to 100 millirem. Um, our commission did vote in favor of moving forward with reducing that. 
Um, also, radiation is known to um, cause ca uh, cataracts. And um, over the last uh, several years, they've um, identified that it's, um, the dose at which it causes cataracts is lower than once thought, so they're recommending um, lowering the dose limits for, um, for lens of the eye. Um, ICRP is recommending lowering the dose limit, and the commission, although we haven't identified what that limit should be, our commission has voted in favor of also lowering um, the dose limit. I doubt that it will be in alignment with international recommendations as far as the value, but we will be lowering that limit. Um, another area, units of radiation exposure. We heard a little bit um, yesterday about um, cell phones and, and adapters, and, and we also see it with units of measurement. Um, <laughs> we use miles here instead of the kilometers and pounds instead of the kilograms, and, and same thing goes with units of measurement uh, um, for, for doses, uh, radiation exposure and doses. We use um, REMS, and the rest of the world uses sieverts. Um, our commission, when, uh, when uh, the paper went up to the commission, our, vo uh, our commission voted um, against removing um, the U.S. traditional units from our regulations. So the U.S. units will remain in our regulations. And um, there are some professional societies like the Health Physics Society and other groups in the U.S. that would really, really like to see us going in um, towards SI units exclusively and getting away from U.S. units. But our commission is not going in that direction. Um, so U.S. units will remain in our regulations. Alara planning, um, as low as reasonably achievable. Uh, this is an acronym that's used in radiation protection. Um, it has to do with optimiz optimization of radiation protection. Um, and the principle here is, is, is making every effort to reduce your exposure, um, you know, to simplify it. Just because you might, um, might, not, might not be anywhere close to your limit, you should still do whatever you can to reduce your, your radiation exposure. We do have regulations to that effect. ICRP does have um, some recommendations. Although we will not be in full alignment, um, we do have some regulations to that effect. Uh, I don't think we're going to be going in the direction of, of aligning it completely. So uh, my intent here is not to really go into a lot of the details of, of the, um, what these changes are, but more just to give you an idea of the perspective of how there are some areas where, yes, we are going in the direction of aligning with um, international recommendations, and then there are some areas where we are not. Um, the U.S. government view is that uh, international standards are really just a point of reference um, for development of U.S. regulations and guidance. Um, you know, while consistency might be a reason for um, you know, uh, going towards considering a change, um, we don't automatically adopt what um, everyone else is doing. Um, it's the rulemaking process that I described earlier. It's the public input process that I also described um, that leads to decisions um, in the U.S. regulations um, and the final um, outcome that may or may not uh, be consistent with, with um, international approach. I have here what our next steps are. Um, I, I described before how um, we've already, already done extensive um, engagement with stakeholders over the last three years, but that's been more general in nature. Um, we're going to continue. Uh, now that we've been given the green light to um, move forward with um, the regulatory basis development, we're going to be doing, um, continuing with extensive engagement. I listed a few um, um, government agencies here, but also states and, and other um, stakeholders. Um, we're going to continue with that um, stakeholder input and discussion, but it's going to be more detailed now um, than before. Um, we're going to be looking at something more detailed to be able to develop um, a rule language, for example. Um, we're going to be looking at benefits and impacts um, on licensees. We plan to have this regulatory basis uh, developed um, in, in December 2015. I know that sounds a ways off, but there's, there is a reason for it. Um, our hands are tied right now um, 
because we're waiting on some dose coefficients from ICRP, which are not going to be done until December 2015. That's where that, that magical date came from. Typically, a regulatory basis does not take that long. Okay, so um, to conclude the presentation, I just wanted to um, just describe, you know, what would be some reasons of um, having um, this alignment. Why, do we, why would we want to consider um, changing our radiation protection regulations to align with international recommendations? And the first one here is coherence um, within NRC's regulations. You know, we have a situation where, um, you know, Part 20, uh, I'm sorry, the NRC, the radiation protection regulations are um, based on international recommendations about 30 years old, from ICRP recommendations from the 1970s. There are some parts of um, NRC's regulations that apply to power reactors that are based on ICRP recommendations from the 1950s. And then um, we do, on a case-by-case -case basis, um, grant licensee requests to use revised internal dosimetry models based on ICRP's 1991 recommendations. So what we have here is a situation where we have three generations of ICRP recommendations being used by licensees today. So if we um, moved towards um, using uh, ICRP's most recent recommendations, um, we would have coherence just within our own regulations. Um, the next one here is, is um, we would have a, a more current estimate of, of uh, radiation risk. Our knowledge of radiation risk has changed since um, what our regulations are based on from 30 years ago. The developments on um, scientific scientific information have, have changed, um, namely the radionuclide uptake, metabolism. We have an increased understanding of the inherent health risks associated with radiation exposure. Um, just as an example, the um, occupational dose limit that I described before is based on, based on the fourfold increase in the average estimates of cancer mortality for low-dose um, radiation exposure. And the last one here, uh, simply put, just consistent, uh, consistency with other countries. Um, for example, um, you know, uh, um, most of the European countries have already changed um, their, their dose limits and many of the ICRP recommendations. Certainly one of the benefits would be to, um, to have consistency with the other, the other countries. So um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for your attention. So thank you very much, uh, Cindy, for uh, that excellent presentation. It's always um, comforting also to see that other sectors have uh, very similar problems to those that exist within the pharmaceutical domain. Um, I'd like to now introduce um, Lembes Rago. Uh, Lembes Rago is the, or was the Director General of the Estonian Drug Regulatory Authority, the first Director General. Uh, he joined WHO in 1999. Um, and he's currently the coordinator of the Quality Assurance and Safety Program within WHO. Um, in 2001, he initiated the, the pre-qualification program at WHO and is instrumental in the organization of uh, global conferences such as the ICTRA, the Conference of Drug Regulatory Authorities. And he also participates uh, in the, as the WHO observer in ICH. Thank you, Lambert.